Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I am so glad that you are here and I am here and we are joining together in this moment of awesomeness. Okay, maybe that's a little bit overblown. We're going to look at some cool stuff today. Amazon Prime Day is coming up here, June 21st and 22nd, and in advance of that, I thought we would look at some cool Redicus radios. We've done Redicus stuff in the past, and I, I have yet to find a bad one. Maybe today's the day we'll find a bad one. Some of them have quirks and things I like, some things I you know wish they would change, whatever. I'll tell you like it is. We're gonna review some today. And what makes this special is uh, on Amazon Prime Day, coming up here, and there's gonna be uh, links in the description below, and discount codes. And that's the biggest thing, because some of the discounts are over 50%, okay? So you can get Redicus Radios for over 50% coming up on Amazon Prime Day, and I would recommend that you would do so. So we're gonna unbox some new product here. One of them that we are gonna take a look at is this guy right here, which we've looked at before. Before we go any further, in regards to my last video where I donated my stereo system and so many of you are like, hey, you're gonna regret that. Oh man, so much has happened since that video. And um, stay tuned to the end of the show. I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> You're kind of right. You're kind of right. Kind of some unexpected twists and turns. Let me just say, I am no longer in possession of the Iowa. And if you want to find out what I'm talking about, stay tuned till the end. Now, today we're going to look at some of these radios here. This one is the V115. This so far is my all time favorite. This is the unit that I listen to every single night. And more so for the fact that it's a fantastic MP3 player more than anything else. As you can see, it's got a, a TF card slaughter, micro SD as many, know, many, many people know it as. Uh, USB charging, it does have an internal, I believe a lithium ion battery, I'm not 100% sure. This is a great line input record device. So if you wanna record, I've recorded records even with this thing. Uh, the resolution isn't the highest, though. It only goes up to 128K uh, on MP3 mode. You can't do any... I don't think it does waves. I don't. I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, so I've got an SD card in here. And on this card, I think this is a 32 gig card. i got to use some lotion. So a class 10, so it's fast, 32 gig card. Although... Doing audio, you don't need a fast, you don't really need a fast card for audio, but I can put it in my SLR and shoot HD video nice and fast. But anyway, I've got all kinds of movie audio, like 30 different, you know, DVDs or VHS tapes that I own. I've made copies for my own use. Uh, usually just MP3 resolution, nothing too crazy there. But I use it, I listen to it at night. So let me uh, go ahead and demonstrate what I'm talking about. Again, I love electronics that welcome you and say hi and say goodbye. I think that's a cool, cool thing. This one um, will default to the mode you had it in before, which for me, again, is uh, MP3. And I'm not going to go through all the features of this. You know, this will be the world's longest show going through all these features on this radio. But it's just audio. And it'll not only will it go to where you left off, uh, or which track you left off, and which mode, but it will go to literally whereabouts in the track you were. Hey, Bob, so I apparently fell asleep at 44 minutes into this last night. It's uh, 192. Okay, so the resolution's a little higher, or perhaps I recorded that on a different device and it's just playing back a higher resolution. I thought it only went up to 128. You can see the battery remain, the EQ settings. It's on repeat all, and I've got the light set to, uh, to shut off after five seconds. I wish you could dim the screen. That would be a nice feature. You can't do that, but um, I've kind of memorized the position of all these buttons. So in the dark, um, usually I put this face down, and I'll kind of, just so it doesn't, you know, you know, my wife doesn't want to see a nuclear light shining in her face when she's trying to fall asleep. So what I'll do is I'll usually put it face down and turn it on and I can navigate it a bit. It does have the antenna. Uh, that is a real 
uh, passive uh, bass reflex speaker back there. I think it's passive. It might be active. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. I think that might be active. I think there's an actual speaker neck, kind of dusty. But it resonates. So, like, when you're holding this thing, you can feel the resonance of it. It's quite amazing. Anyway, so that's it for this one. I'm going to shut this off. Bye-bye. I think that's cool. And the next one we're going to look at is something I've never seen before. This is a Redicus TR101 FM receiver. When this came, it was about three hours before, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't looking at it the whole time, but I saw this, and for some reason, my mind read FM transmitter, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't remember ordering that, but, you know, apparently, I, I, I do this stuff so far in advance sometimes. I mean, these have been sitting um, in storage for several weeks, you know, waiting for today's show, and then I looked at it again, I was like, oh, it's a receiver, so it's a radio. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Let's look and see what we got here. Okay, and I do recall that there were over the ear earphones with the built-in radio. Do you remember in the in like the eighties, especially? It seemed like in the eighties it was really popular to have like headphones with built-in radio. Something you never see now. I remember my dad had these Casio ones. Literally, it is a radio built into a pair of headphones. That's cool. Look at the pretty decent headphones, too. I wonder if you can bypass. Cool. Use them as headphones without the radio. And it does require double A's. Some people like that. Some people are like, oh, man, I wish it was rechargeable. There's a side to both. I mean, on one hand, it's kind of handy to have a rechargeable battery. On the other hand, it's got a finite life before it needs replacing. With these, you just you know replace it as needed. So yeah, that's cool. Let's go ahead and uh, put some batteries in and give it a test. All right, so let's test them out. They're lightweight. This is cool. Sounds good. I mean, it's not like super luxurious incredible rich sound i mean it sounds like you know an adequate radio headphone you know if you're going out for a walk you're going out for a jog perhaps you didn't care what people had to say about the way this looks on your head i could see it working i could see it working hands free yeah now let's try out the uh, headphone jack capability. I, I'm intrigued by that. Let's see how that works. I like the idea that it's got, you know, a jack where you could plug in an eighth inch cord. I'm assuming and hoping that this is a headphone jack. And I've got the unit powered off right now. So I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to be using my Sony D131 CD player. And let's spin it up and see if these work as headphones and how good they sound. Not bad. Yeah, it definitely works as a set of passive headphones, and the sound is okay. I mean, it's adequate. It's not definitely not the best pair of headphones, but it's a good pair of headphones if you want to have some private listening and have the ability to have the radio plugged in right there. When I first saw this, it reminded me of like a gaming headset, like that was the mic. <laughs> but yeah, that does a trick. Next radio is this. This is a TR604. We have um, had this on the show in the past, and it had an interesting uh, situation where I decided to open it up, and in so doing, I made one of my famous mistakes, the kind that has garnered me the reputation as somebody who shouldn't open up or try to repair things, because it always goes badly. Again, you want to know what happened to the Iowa, it kind of goes down that same road. Stay tuned till the end of the show. Okay. Um, so I, you, that one couldn't be unboxed again and couldn't even be reviewed because I destroyed it. It was actually built very, very well. What it was is I tried to pry it open with, I got all the screws out, I tried to pry it open and I thought the volume knob uh, was supposed to stay on, but what happened is I pulled it out and it ripped the backing out and destroyed the knob switch. So completely my fault and it was built like a tank. So. I already have a good opinion about this radio. Let's look at it one more time. You know, some people 
you may look at this and say, why in the world, you know, what's the deal with radios? You know what I mean? Do people really want radios? Well, yes, they do. You know, seniors like radios. People that listen to talk radio like radios. You know, people at a work site. People, you know, working on projects. Let's say you're painting. You know what I mean? We just put it on the radio. People take for granted with all this. On, this is a really good chord. And you may, you know, laugh at me when I say stuff like that, but it's heavy. It feels well built. There's, there is a difference, all right? That, that is a good chord. But I mean, sometimes, you know, we take for granted the fact we have all this on demand music. You can listen, you know, on the internet to anything at any time. And that's cool. And I, I enjoy that myself every single day. But at the same time, there's something about, you know, not knowing what song is coming up next, about, you know, discovering new music or about free content that doesn't cost anything. Once you buy a radio, You've got, as long as they keep the service on, I mean, assuming we don't, you know, deactivate analog radio at any point over here, um, you know, you're good to go for, for a lifetime. So there's definitely a multitude of use cases for it. So this is a beautiful thing, in my opinion. I just, I, it's simple. It's very basic. It doesn't try to do too much. A lot of times products these days will do so many things, including some of the things that we're looking at here. They'll play MP3s, they'll record, they'll, you know, have sometimes have flashlights in them, all kinds of, you know, crazy features and things. And it's like, well, what about just playing the radio? And this one is an AM FM radio. And from what I remember, it is a digital tuner, which is pretty par for the course. But let's take a look around. Um, good molded plastic case. Uh, it is not a flimsy plastic. They used a good ABS. It is thick. It takes, looks like, three, what are those, D-cells? D-cell batteries. It's got an AC power supply right there. No wall wart, which is kind of nice not have, I mean, so many things these days, everything has a wall wart. So to have, you know, a piece of equipment that doesn't require that is nice. The tuning dials on the side. Headphone jack right there. On the front, we've got an AM FM switch. We've got a low and high switch. Now, this is the knob that did me in. So I took, I thought because of this recess here, as you can see, it looks like this metal looking piece or this gray piece here uh, is separate from the front casing. So I assumed that when I pulled it off, it would come up and over the knob. But in actuality, this knob is like, or this opening is a cupped shape and it goes back behind the knob. The silver, from what I remember now, is actually part of the knob, and the opening is much smaller. So what I did, I just ripped a hole right through the switch and it pulled it apart, which took a lot of force and I didn't understand why it wasn't you know, coming apart <laughs> better. You can see the speaker there. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Figure of eight lead, as my friends in the UK say. And hear that clipping, that means it is a digital tuner. Incredibly complicated, not to mention expensive. Rebecca, can we expand on that idea? First time the environment began training. Got an AM. It's got a lot of volume, it's got a lot of punch. That's a tone switch. High tone, low tone. Very cool. And then is this a stereo indicator up there? Let's go back to FM. No, it's just a power switch. Okay, or a power light indicator. Very basic, but it does the job. And again, you know, when you just want a radio to be a radio, this is a good radio. <laughs> okay. All right. We have one more to look at. Okay, here is another new one that I have never seen before. This is the Redicus V111, FM stereo, shortwave, medium wave, DSP receiver. It looks similar in form factor to this, but not quite. Put that kind of over there as a point of reference. Let's see what it says here. Full band world receiver. It shows the frequency response there. It goes down to 64 megahertz. USB power supply. So I wonder if it has a battery. Three mode portable, 60 memory. Wow, that's a lot of stations. 13 band. Devol. 
I am not sure what that digital volume control power switch it features a power switch yes that's a feature I've been looking for FM stereo interesting okay let's find out DSP looks like there's two different versions right here with a 9k step and a 10k step silicone labs DSP let's go ahead and open it up Okay, earbuds usually the earbuds that come with stuff isn't that good there has been exceptions but typically they're a placeholder I would say until you can get something you like better those are like old school those are the kind we had like in the 90s before they realized that if you kind of scoop it towards the front that's really where the ear canal is I mean they're still they'll still get the job done cool all right and little earmuffs too Earbuds also don't have these anymore. Like a little sponge. All right. What else we got? Our manual. Now you'll notice that I'm not using. I'm not reading any owner's manuals here. So, I've Redicus has come back to me before, and they were like, you know, you missed a major feature. <laughs> it probably would help if I read the manual, but yeah, that leaves a that leaves an option for hey, down the road, you know, something else I discovered about something. Plus, most people don't read the manual. All right, this is indeed really close in size. Very interesting. Yeah. Good form factor. This is a good form factor. Clearly, this is a very different device, though. Let's kind of take a look around the outside edge. We've got a wrist strap, telescoping antenna. Okay, we've got a power switch. Yes, that feature. Headphone jack. 5 volt DC in. Now is it, there's a kickstand, so you can set it up at an angle like that. This one does not have that. No kickstand on that. The ventilation there, so, okay, so it does, there's a speaker. It does require batteries, so even though you can power it off of DC, it's not gonna charge batteries. Do not use old and new batteries together takes two 1.5 volt double A's or UM3's. So let's go ahead and put some batteries in there and fire it up. I'm going to take the advice and not mix new and old batteries. I'm just gonna put into old and old batteries, but actually these are pretty new. So as a kid, I always wondered, why did they put a ribbon in there? It never occurred to me that this can actually be helpful in removing said batteries. Well, I think I, I realized it at some point, but probably later than most people did. And again, tease me if you want to, but little touches like putting some sponge on the back of the battery cover. I think those things make a difference. If it seems extra difficult for me to accomplish basic tasks like that, it's because I'm looking through the camera lens. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and extend the aerial or the antenna. I watch so much Tecmon that after a while I start talking like him. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so it defaults to a clock mode. So you can actually get full alarm clock capabilities out of this unit. So it's gonna show the time when it's off. And then when you power it on, it's going to come to life with a backlit display. I love how they have this label, display. I can't find the display, is it this? Where's the display? That's the display, okay, cool. Thank you very, very much. Okay, so the volume right there. One thing that I read, I did read the manual a little bit. I did, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm not filming for a minute. Why don't I actually read the man manual? I can perhaps actually, you know, share something useful, which would be a, a nice thing to put on the show. So the favorite button, I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Cause it does have all these memory presets. I think it said like 60 or something like that. So what in the world is a favorite? So if you say this is my favorite, I don't know if you have to tap it or press and hold it. Okay, press and hold it when you turn it back on it'll go to that so it's kind of like this where it defaults to whatever you were doing before and even if you're listening to an mp3 it defaults to the same position that the that the uh, file was in so for this it's just radio there's no mp3 there's no you know there's no sd card slot basically presets to where you were before did they need to make a button to do that no they could have just had it you know remember its last place 
Uh, besides that, we have um, basically which radio mode you're in, shortwave, medium, or AM, and FM. You got your volume up and down, and you've got some tuning. So we're in FM, so let's go ahead and press and hold, and it looks like that will scan to the next station. Brings up the classical station, which is good because I can play some of that. Let's listen to the volume. I mean, it sounds like you would expect it to. Definitely the 115 has better sound, although it's amazing because the speaker is much smaller on this. But it's got this bass, this subwoofer back here. Or as it says right here, mega bass. <laughs> so, yeah. So you've got all your controls for your alarm clock function, your memory set functionality. So let's just play with uh, some different bands here. Let's go to medium wave or a AM. As many of us know. It's interesting, the screen shows it as AM, even though down here it says medium wave. So I'm just going to press and hold to scan. Let's see what we got. It looks like the number one would be the preset, should you choose to set one. And let's see what else we can get. <laughs> the voices, they're great. Okay. Doesn't seem as sensitive on AM. Let's go ahead and press memory, press and hold. No. Okay. Memory two, memory three. Oh, there's preset in there. So let's say I want to set a new one. Oh, now it's skipping through the presets. So if I come out of memory and I just set a frequency, what if I want to make that? Oh, I'm M plus. So I'm going to add this. Nope. So this is the lock switch if you want to lock the keys so you don't accidentally press a button that you don't want to press when it's in your pocket. That's if you press and hold. And if you tap, you can set your memory presets in there like that. It does have a mute switch, which is kind of interesting. Z. <laughs> when you're ready to sleep, hit mute. It's just kind of weird. <laughs> okay. And let's go to shortwave. This will be the trick. It is now, it's about 6.30. This time of the year, there's plenty of sunlight out. So the ionosphere hasn't really shrunk. Although, I don't know if that impacts shortwave. But let's go ahead and scan and see if we pick up anything on shortwave. No big surprise, we're not really picking up anything on shortwave. Cool. Alrighty, well, I think we've... Interesting, a little uh, Bruno Mars there for you. So, interesting radios. I think that was an interesting selection of radios. So again, if you wanna get these with a really, really good discount, there's different discount depending on which product it is. Not all of them have a discount, but all the information is in the, is in the description below. But before we do that, I want to share with you what happened with the Iowa. Okay, so what happened? Well, funny you should ask. If you haven't seen the show with the Iowa stereo system, basically I lifted my component system or most of it and donated it and my thought was with this Iowa system that I got online, got an excellent price on it, really, really good price on it, um, that I was going to replace the radio, the CD player functionality, and hopefully the tape player as well uh, with this unit from a unit that I had as a teenager. It's very nostalgic to me. It's something that I have a lot of good memories, more so than even the component stuff because I never had that. So I got it, did the show, uh, tested it out, obviously, before I donated the stuff. Everything tested fine. Uh, I knew there was issues with the tape player, so I had I had kept my Pioneer deck. That's the only cassette player I have now, the like component level one. Um, and the big question is, does he regret it? Does he regret it? Well, stay tuned. You're about to find out. Um, yeah, I kind of regret it, and here's why. So I took it apart all the way down to the chassis, cleaned it. Um, the belts, the both decks ran off of one motor, both tape decks in the Iowa ran off of one motor with about 30,000 belts. All of them were stretched out. I tried boiling them. I boiled the belts too long and turned them to goo. There's not a belt kit available online. I could get one of the generic belt kits, 
but it was just a level of effort and cost and time I wasn't it was just like it wasn't worth it so I was like okay I'm just going to have the the cassette deck external which is already starting to trigger me um, and then I'll use it for the CD player and radio so I got it all set up I've got it all looking nice I almost shared a picture with you guys I'm glad I didn't because it's changed again this week it's been you know through three different iterations this week my stereo system um, now I hadn't thrown everything away I did keep the mini disc player the one tape deck I've got the VCR and the DVD player and all that stuff and, and the TV monitor in there so I still have a stack it's just not as redundant. I don't have three disc optical disc players and you know multiple tape decks and stuff. It's just kind of I want trying to I'm trying to bonsai my electronic experience down to something that is less ridiculous. You know what I mean? And less of a footprint. Um, so anyway, I'm listening to my CD player. I'm working. It's going great. And then guess what? The CD player motor starts squealing. I'm like, that's it. So it, at this point, it's a radio, and I'm, it is a cool-looking radio. I do like all the lights. I mean, it was like, it's just a bunch of flashing lights. I love that, though. I love flashing lights. But I packed up the whole thing, and I donated it. So now my wife is like, you're not going back to buy back what you just donated. And I'm like, well, I want to look. And they, didn't, they don't have this stuff on the shelf yet. I, um, I am like, well, what can I do? What can I do? So I already have the Blu-ray player, which works as a good CD player. I do listen to a lot of CDs. So I'm like, well, I guess I can use that as my CD player. It does have an optical out, so I can run that into the mini disc player if I want to do high resolution lossless dubs. But, uh, and I have the one cassette deck, but I have no tuner because I donated my beautiful Kenwood, you know, co like component, almost pro level tuner, PLL synthesized. And I do listen to the radio. Um, that's why I like doing these shows like the ones today. I do listen to the radio. Um, so yeah, I'm sitting there like really wishing I'd done that. So I'm using, I'm not even gonna tell you what I'm using. I'm using something that's a temporary solution. I'm gonna have to get a tuner. I would love to find a CD player tuner, but um, yeah. So anyway, that's what happened. And yeah, do I regret it? Yes, I do. I admit it. I'm being completely transparent with you guys. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this show. That's gonna do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time.